video for Surviving the Pole Shift Facebook group uh, explaining why it is that Planet X is always seen close into the Sun. We had a new uh, view of Planet X. Uh, I got this off of Pole Shift Ning. Um, here you can see the little lump on the side there, the classic angle, classic location. Uh, these are lens flares here. Um, so as you can see again it's showing up close into the Sun. So I want to explain why it is that uh, Planet X does this. <clears throat> Let's start with an overview of uh, the orbit of Planet X. Um, now this is wrong. Nibiru or Planet X does not orbit in, in an elliptical fashion. Um, so this is a fallacy. It orbits like this. Uh, we'll start here at 2002 when it entered our solar system. Uh, creeped around the Sun. Now I'm using Zeta Talk as a backup. I always use it Zeta Talk Science as a backup. Um, and of course, uh, this is done in 2013. As you can see here, uh, Planet X has been creeping through the solar system since 2003. And so what happens is when Planet X is finally released from its uh, from the ecliptic zone, where there's a great deal of um, energy flows happening there, uh, it quickly goes past Earth, causes a uh, a magnetic lock on to Earth, and passes by quite quickly. And Earth follows at the crust. And then let's go, and then the um, the uh, the crust is is at a different location, but the oceans keep going, which is why you have the pole shift wave danger, which is why you have to be on at safe uh, safe from the sea. But that's another another video report. So, Planet X carries on out into space, and it comes back. They say I think it's seven years later. Uh, on the light blue line is the is a return path and it goes around the other side of the Sun and then it whips out um, uh, it goes back to the Sun's binary twin which is here the dark it's a dark star a dead Sun um, 68 trillion miles and uh, obviously it goes around it uh, like so and then it starts the the cycle over again on, on the incoming in the blue he, in the center area here is a gravity balance between the Sun and uh, its binary t twin. So Planet X slows down dramatically here and may spend maybe 500,000 years uh, dithering here, moving very slowly. And it's only until it gets close to one of those gravity foci, such as our Sun or the binary, sin, uh, binary, binary twin, uh, it's, it, it speeds up, it goes very fast. I remember reading in Zeta Talk that it approaches the speed of light. So that's the orbit, and they call it a sling orbit. Now, let's look at what uh, Planet X is up against in our solar system. Now, this is obviously only what we're what what I'm aware of and and what I've read. Um, now, we're going to move over to here, and we're going to switch gears here. <clears throat> this is uh, this is a profile of the Sun, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. So basically, this right here, uh, and this arc is the outer edge of our solar system, defined as defined by um, <clears throat> the sun's <clears throat> uh, extent of solar wind reach. It stops here, and then outside of this, you have the uh, interstellar space, which is a whole other ball game. So we're in the bubble here, this big bubble. Now this distance here is about 9.3 billion miles, as an example, how 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 big that is, uh, Pioneer two was launched in 1979. Pardon me, 1977, and uh, it traveled it it traveled at 55,000 kilometers an hour, and it went it took over 38 years at that speed to clear the sun's heliosphere or the bubble. So that's how big it is. Now, here we have another representation of what I'm saying. This is the, the heliosphere here. So the sun is emitting uh, massive particles called solar wind or cosmic radiation, a uh, cosmic wind, and it blows it out to its extent, to the farthest extent it can. Now what happens is this entire mass 
of, of uh, area here is full of atomic uh, particles and circulating. And near the sun, they recirculate. Now, there's another one. There's another. You can see here are the more of the inner disturbance of the solar system. This is the magnetic field of the sun as it rotates, blowing out these waves. So there's a great deal of forces, atomic particles, all happening in this in this great big heliosphere around the sun. So when Planet X enters the solar system, it's got a it's got to fight through all that cosmic wind, act, wind activity. Now that's the only, there's probably many other uh, things happening, many other uh, part, uh, atomic particles. The Zeta say there are, I think they said there's a thousand one atomic particles and man is only aware of like 30 or 50 or 100 or something like that. So there's many more particles involved. So here is Planet X creeping through the inner solar system. <laughs> fighting the the uh, massive uh, flows on the ecliptic. Now the ecliptic, uh, to go back to this one, here uh, you see the disks of the orbit orbital plane of all the different planets. This disk, that's commonly referred to as the ecliptic. So Planet X is fighting its way through that. Now I want to go to another one of my drawings. Uh, let me find it here. This one. Okay, so this is Planet X. That's the Sun. This is Earth. This is Venus. And this is Earth's dead twin. Um, this light blue, this light circle here is called what the Zeta cup. The Zeta, uh, the Zetas call uh, the cup, and that's formed by a very simple pr uh, principle. When you've got uh, a blockage in a flow. Uh, the, the flow moves around the blockage and creates a back eddy behind it. And that's really is, that's what's happening. Only instead of water or whatever, or air, it happens to be uh, cosmic particles, uh, atomic particles from the sun, blown out from the sun. So Earth is caught in this cup with the other two planets. Uh, this also means that Earth is stopped in orbit. Now, that's another discussion, of course. Um, but we wouldn't be seeing Earth's dead twin um, to the west if it weren't stopped in orbit. That's all I'm going to say right now. I can argue this and prove it. Uh, I already have actually a drawing made up, uh, which will come out in my next newsletter, which uh, pretty much nails it to the wall to anybody who wants to figure it out with me. Uh, if you read it and look at, the, at, at, at my graphic, uh, it's quite extensively uh, detailed, but you'll see that it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Earth is indeed stopped in orbit. Anyways, here it is in the cup, standing in front of Planet X. Now, that means um, that as Planet X advances in a uh, clockwise mo movement through through the around the Sun, clockwise against Earth and the rest of the planets, anti-clockwise movement around the Sun. Naturally, uh, on December. 25th, 2003, uh, Earth encountered uh, Planet X moving from the opposite direction, popping up from the solar system south and into uh, the orbital plane. So Earth had no choice but to stop. So, er so s ever since then, as Planet X has been creeping in its clockwise uh, uh, motion through the inner solar system, Earth and, and all the other uh, planets in this cup have been pushed back. So what that means is that the Earth and Planet X are in a lockstep. And that means that when Planet X advances a mile, Earth retreats a mile. Planet X advances for a few weeks for for you know for 20, 20 miles, Earth in the same period of time backs up the 20 miles. So they're locked into this while Planet X advances, is pushing, pushing them back. Uh, also keep in mind that since uh, the planet X and the, and the planets in the particle flow cup are kept, uh, are one unit, they're one unit, they're moving together. Uh, so the only other player in, in this uh, drama is the sun, and it's really an access point. So you've got uh, planet X, Earth, Earth's dead twin, and Venus all sitting on a swing together. 
and the axis and the swing is hung from the from the sun so it only the sun only is a backdrop to the drama between earth and planet x so this is why uh, planet x is always viewed close into the sun because of the angle that has been established between uh, between planet x and earth and the sun and that angle has remained uh, more or less the same which is why uh, we have sightings like uh, this here that I referred to earlier this is a constant you always see planet X here and the reason for that is I'm saying is because we are locked in lockstep with planet X and the Sun is just an axis point so it doesn't for that angle doesn't change very much the only thing that's going to change this is when planet X speeds up and um, uh, it achieves a much higher velocity as it leaves our solar system and that is that's pole shift time so that's why we always see planet X in static positions relatively static this is Chris Thomas uh, thanks for watching video for surviving the pole shift Facebook group uh, explaining why it is that planet X is always seen close into the Sun we had a new uh, view of planet X uh, I got this off of pole shift Ning um, here you can see the little lump on the side there the classic angle classic location uh, these are lens flares here um, so as you can see again it's showing up close into the Sun so I want to explain why it is that uh, planet X does this <clears throat> let's start with the overview of uh, the orbit of planet X um, now this is wrong Nibiru or planet X does not orbit in, in an elliptical fashion um, so this is a fallacy it orbits like this uh, we'll start here at 2002 when it entered our solar system uh, creeped around the Sun now I'm using Zeta talk as a backup I always use it Zeta talk science as a backup um, and of course uh, this is done in 2013 you can see here uh, planet X has been creeping through the solar system since 2003 and so what happens is when planet X is finally released from its uh, from the ecliptic zone where there's a great deal of um, energy flows happening there uh, it quickly goes past Earth causes a, uh, a magnetic lock-on 